Good morning. Good morning. I am a minute late. I have been scrambling. Scrambling. That looks terrible. Oh, goodness. Monday mornings are always... Always the best. So, hit record. All right. So, 25 seconds in. Trying to get... (laughs) trying to get into a flow not easy not easy um how are you this morning what are you uh what are you working on i have a mess i just have a mess um today will be spent digging out from the weekend and it shouldn't have to be that way but uh but that's what's gonna happen I have something new to bring to the stream today. I tried, I tried using my all of my technical expertise, and I've managed to um, have something for you today that is not the same old, same old, which I'm proud of. Uh, don't make fun of it, or else I won't do it again. Um, gosh, strange, strange uh, day yesterday. Strange day yesterday. I guess we should get into it right away. So, you knew I was going to go on uh, showings yesterday, and I told you about the one where, because of technology, because of my ability to check on my phone uh, to reschedule something, I managed to reschedule something during a uh, open house, which they didn't they didn't approve my um, my showing because they were going to have an open house, and they're like, "Well, how can you just not know that?" Uh, We've got an open house. You should just go to that. So, um, for one, we did. You know, we you were with me yesterday. We did the live stream, and then uh, got cleaned up. And I, um, there were two showings yesterday in University City, and University City is a uh, a community in the county, St. Louis County, and. Uh, Prices vary greatly. Um, so we looked at one house that was they were asking two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for, and we were looking at another house that they were asking four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for. So yesterday, I got to the first showing a little bit early, and uh, I got a text from my buyer on the way that he said, "I'm hey, I'm running late, but uh, I'll be there," and that's cool. For my showing stuff, look, sometimes I'm late. I don't like to be late. Um, some Sometimes stuff comes up, but I'm late, okay? And, I mean, I'm not. I don't hold anyone to being on time. Like, so when somebody's, as, as long as, you know, as long as you give me the, the benefit of the doubt, when uh when you're late there's no issues when i'm late there's no issues but but we try to be on time like as long as we're trying to be on time that's you know that's the key and so uh i gotta get this i don't know if i really like this setup but anyway so then i got a text when i was there and he said uh the gps i was supposed to meet him at noon it said the gps isn't it says i'm not going to be there till 12 20. i was like well, that's 20 minutes that's 20 minutes um and so I, I had some time, so I, I sat there, sat there for 20 minutes. My point in the story being, hey, look, as long as you give me the same benefit, if something gets screwed up for me. But he got there and he said, you know, hey, my ADHD kicked in. I'm sorry. I've, I just lost time and feel like I can relate. Uh, even this morning for the live stream at eight eight fifty nine. Okay, I told myself I need to be ready for the live stream. And by 9.01, when I was frantically remembering that I had a live stream, um, you know, within the space of two minutes, I had lost my focus and was now late when I was going to be on time. And you've seen me do this before. So we go to the house, $250,000. Strange in that when you go to, it's at the end of a street that doesn't have a turnaround. So you have to back up into somebody else's drive, which if I'm, if I'm the agent and there's a house that's like that, I'm not telling my buyers to buy the house because I don't want people backing up in my driveway every day. Is it okay if someone backs in every once in a while? Yes. 
but every day and every time somebody goes down the road and misses, no, that's just stupid. I don't want to be a part of that. $250,000 walk in the first room. He says, this is wonderful. I thought it was wonderful too. The floors were nice. Go to the kitchen and something happened that I'd never seen on a showing before. I've been doing this for a number of years. Probably a decade now. More than that. He got on the floor and looked underneath the cabinet, um, like where the kick panels are, and he said it's dirty. Really? <laughs> really? Who does that? Who, who looks underneath the kick panel of the cabinets during a home showing? Said, that was the first, well, he does. That's the answer. That was the first time I've ever seen that, and I was blown away by it. Because, look. <laughs> What is the goal? Like, what are we trying to accomplish here? Like, are we trying to prove that they didn't clean a spot regularly? You know, like, like, is it the is it the number one reason why you're not buying this home? Like, do I when they ask me for feedback on the showing, do I put we were really going to write an offer and we were convi we we were going to buy this house and then when we looked under the kick panel of the kitchen cabinets and saw dirt no no you you sick sick person shame on you for not cleaning underneath there before showing i'm serious you may say well i mean what if you look under the sink and there's mold well sure sure but looking under the kick panels of the cabinets on the floor and noticing there's dirt there come on come on I made fun. I I know the guy. I made fun of him the rest of the time uh, for that. And so, anyway, three bedroom house, two bathrooms. I can't remember the other. Yeah, there was two bathrooms. There was one in the hallway, and then there was one in the master. It was a very plain house. There was nothing about it that was um, unique. I hate to say that they would built a nice uh, wood stairwell off the side of the house. You know, there's no, I don't believe there's a fence, but all in all a great house, $250,000. I think 99% of the population could move in that house and be happy. I mean, there was really not, I mean, there was, there was nothing about it that was, that was unremarkable. So, after that house, we went to another house. Now, that the house we first looked at was $250,000. Second house, what they were asking about. I don't know. They had started off at like four sixty, dollars and they didn't get a sale, and so they fired their agents. I'd like to know how you, how you screw up. Well, I know how you screw up, but fired their agents and brought the property back on the market, and they're having an open house yesterday. I think they're down to like four forty. dollars So we go in this house, and I, and it's an open house, and... In St. Louis County, we have masks uh, for, like, some things. It's a very odd mask policy in, in St. Louis County. And, and, and I don't know about St. Louis City because I, I, don't, I don't know. But anyway, we, we, knew, we figured we should wear a mask. So we wore masks, and uh, that was good because there were some other people wearing masks. But we walked in, and, like, I'm an agent, and the lady introduced herself and I guess she thought I was not an agent or something, but she's like, go sign in at the QR code. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. And my buyer's like, I'm not doing that. Why would anybody do that in 2022? Like, I don't want my email. I don't want you to email me listings for your, for your brokerage. I don't want you emailing my client for listings for your brokerage. It's dumb. It's dumb, but you know what? Whatever. So we go in there, walk in the second room, and they had two people showing. You know, had two people at the open house, a man and a woman, and and the and there they have this particular brokerage has an image. They're young and hip, and as you if you look at me right now, you know that young and hip is not an image that I can pull off. Okay, and I mean disappointing. I I don't think I could, when I was young I don't think I could have pulled off young and hip. So I mean I think I lost my hair at like twenty two, twenty three been gone so young and hip is hard when you're bald 
Just, I mean, you could go all the way bald, but I don't want to go all the way bald. I mean, shave all my hair. No, it's just strange. Anyway, that being said, we go in the second room. There's some people talking. And the thing about an open house, what, I don't know if I've, I've talked about this, but, but I don't like open houses where there's all these people. Like, I don't think it does a benefit to anyone. I don't think it benefits the buyers. I don't think it benefits the sellers. I don't think it benefits the agents because like, let's just use an example, say a 1500 square foot home. Okay. How often are you going to have 50 people in your home in that size of a home? I mean, you're probably not. I mean, maybe Thanksgiving, maybe Christmas, maybe whatever big holiday you celebrate. I don't want to leave anybody out, any group out. I mean, just when are you going to have 50 people over? And so when you have 50 people over during an open house, it's just like you're on top of each other. Now, I'm a, I'm a germaphobe. I mean, I, I don't like germs. Can't stand it. I, 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 don't even, I don't even like to, you know, I don't like to be in other people's houses, which is ironic because I show houses. But anyway, we, uh, we're all packed in. I just want to get, when I'm at an open house where there's so many people, I just want to get somewhere where there's space. Like, I don't want to be with a bunch of people. This would be in the coronavirus times or other times. I just don't like it. So we go in the kitchen and the kitchen's like six by six. And I, and I said, uh, hey man, do you want to check the dust underneath the stove? <laughs> he said no. So next to the, one of the bigger pet peeves I have with homes in University City and, and homes in general is I don't like single, I don't like bathrooms in kitchens, okay? I, I don't like it at all. I've never liked it. I don't like it so much. You have no idea how much I don't like it. I just don't like it. I'm sorry. I, if that makes me a bad person, you say, well, that's the only place they could put the, the, the bathroom in the kitchen. It's like. You don't blank where you eat. This is obvious to me. So anyway, a lot of homes in university have bathrooms and kitchens, and I just hate it. Anyway, this one was right next to the kitchen, so I guess that's okay. I guess that's okay. And then my buyer was saying something like, fire department doesn't like when you have glass block windows in the bathroom. And I'm like, I don't know anything about that, and I don't care really don't. I don't care what the fire department likes and what they don't. They're not buying the house. You are. It, it, it wasn't like we weren't trying to be mean. So we get there and then I've always been a fan of going to the basement first because the basement tells you a lot about the house. A lot of times tells you if you're going to buy the house or not. Which is strange, you'd think. Go in the basement. First thing First thing, buyer's like, oh, my God. So what's the problem? Well, the, ba the basement ceiling is six feet tall. And the buyer's wife's father is probably seven feet tall. So, so, so one member of the family would never be able to go to the basement comfortably. I wasn't comfortable. I mean, we're in a small space, and now it's like everything's built for people that are smaller than six, smaller than six feet. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not. I'm. I think I'm like five eleven. I mean, I'm not towering over anyone. But, but this is short. And I've seen this in University City. They just don't have that. They just once you put in drywall and stuff. I mean, you just don't have a lot of space. So there's that, and then we walk into an unfinished section, and then there's um, some water foundation issues that had you know been corrected over the time and i don't really want to dig them for that um i thought that the um i thought that water heater and the uh, hvac were a little bit dated compared to the first house which they were almost brand new so that's another plus i didn't check the roof of the university of State house because when we went to there's a laundry in the basement when we went to the laundry room in the basement my buyer was so uncomfortable with the height of the basement that we, he's like, let's get out of here. And I was like, okay, 
because I'm, I'm good with that. And he's, I said, do you even want to see the second floor? He's like, no, let's just get out of here. Okay. So what do we make of this? We've got a $250,000 home that anyone would buy. And we have a $450,000 home that was disgusting and terrible and no one would want to live in it. I say no one, but if you would have priced it $250,000, would someone want to live into it? I guess. Someone's going to buy it now. But that's, that's the difference between price and value. It's illustrated right there. What are you getting for your 400? You're getting more square footage, not usable. The kitchen in the first house was uh, for 250K was, was larger than the kitchen for the 450,000. The bedroom size was about the same, and it was all on one floor in the $250,000 house. You didn't have to go upstairs. I mean, what were you getting in this house? They had done the kitchen. They had granite countertops. The other house needed uh, new ca- – they kind of needed new cabinets. They were from the 80s. But you really need to, like, in my opinion, as a buyer, you really need to look at this. Look at this example for what it is and, and, and understand like, yes, you're looking for something within a certain price range, but don't, don't assume that because something is a certain price, it's worth your money. To me, the, the second house they were asking, where they were asking 450, it wasn't in a neighborhood that was uh, like sensical. I know one of the reasons why people want to live there, but it's, I don't want to get into it on a podcast or, or a live stream. I don't want to get into it anywhere because I don't, know how to, I don't know how to couch it in any way that would be n- n- not offensive to someone. Uh, but anyway, we walked through there and uh, couldn't stand it. You shouldn't be. So what about open house etiquette? Well, I've, I've done a lot of open houses. And um, as the agent at the open house, at the agent at the open house, I had something wrong on my thing and I was freaking out. I'm sorry. I thought I had lost my entire audio for the entire time. But anyway. As the agent at an open house, I have seen people walk through the front door and try to get away from me. As far as like w- when they're ready to leave, they will go through the basement door. They will jump fences. Okay. And I don't think I'm that bad of a person. Like, and I'm not a salesy person either. I, whenever someone comes through one of my opens, I'm like, hello, how are you? If you have any questions, you know, first of all, I'm John Schenk. I'm the listing agent. If you have any questions, please let me know. That's it. That's it. Or, hey, how are you doing this afternoon? You know? I'm not, I'm not the guy that's like, hey, well, who's your agent? I, I can do a better job for you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have to go to open houses. You'd be with me the entire time. We, we could go to houses together, and I'll always show houses to you personally. It's like, you really want to hang out with that dude. That's the number one thing you're thinking is, oh, can I please hang out with this dude? Anyway. Anyway, so it's okay to leave the house in any way you want to. You know, jump out a window, go for it. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Some houses just aren't for you. Now, what if the house is terrible? Then you should walk walk through it because sometimes you just need to behold the terrible. You just need to see it for yourself. You need to be like, oh my God, somebody really did this. And oh my God, somehow the pictures allowed me to come here and see this house. Like that was going to be a good idea. Makes me laugh. Like, and for me, if I have to drive 25 minutes to go see a house, I'm going to go see the house. I'm there. I tell that to my buyers all the time. We're here. Might as well walk through it now. You don't have to be. Long, you don't have to do it for a long time or anything. But, but for an open house where you're uncomfortable and freaked out about the height of the the bath of the basement, there's all kinds of people around. Age of COVID. Just get out. Just leave. You know. Just go. Don't don't feel bad. 
So that's what we did. And when we got outside, he got some air. He's like, I hate this. I, I want to go. I'm going to call my wife or I'm going to call my, well, I guess my girlfriend. And we're going to get, we're going to get, uh, we're going to get out of here. This is terrible. Like, we're never looking at this house again. This is definitely a no. So, I don't know what to make. I don't know what to make of that. So then, after that, I was scheduled to show a different house in Florissant. And when I went to schedule the showing this morning, it had gone pending. So now my afternoon was kind of free. Not because I wanted it to be free, but but one thing I wanted to mention was just I wanted to go over things with you um, because maybe I'm wrong about stuff, and I'm sure the internet will point that out when I am. I wanted to show the fluorescent buyer the house, okay he wasn't he had to work on Saturday. I couldn't show it. He didn't want to see the house on Saturday. He wanted to go on Sunday. And so I was I was happy to schedule an appointment for Sunday. Now the house went. The house sold. Went under contract. Now do is that my fault? I mean, I feel I honestly feel bad. I would like to have shown them the house, but I can't show a house that's under contract, really. I've done it I've done it before, but it just depends on the, the seller and the agent. But this particular case wasn't worth it. But I, I I genuinely feel bad, and you know, you snooze, you lose. It comes into play a little bit here, but let's. I mean, should my buyer have taken off of work just to go see the house? No, no, because what if it would have been under contract? You know, what if to me? Let's just assume that whoever put in an offer gave him twenty four hours to uh, accept the offer. You know, they could have gotten there in the morning. It, it would have been gone the next day. So, I don't know. Anyway, so with that being the case, I got home about, I don't know, 2? 1.30. 1.30. I got gas for the car, 1.30. And I was talking to my wife. I said, let's go to Hannibal, Missouri. Now, have you ever been to Hannibal, Missouri? What, why would anyone go to Hannibal, Missouri? Let's see. Let's check. Oh, boy. Hannibal Lecter's not where I want to go. Hannibal, Missouri. Hannibal, Missouri is a city along the Mississippi River. Here, I'll... I'll put you on to, uh, I'll put you on with me. Uh, in Marion and Rails County, or Rawls County in the state of Missouri, according to the 2020 census, population 1,700, largest city in Marion County. The bulk of the city is in Marion County with a tiny sliver in the south extending into Rails County. Isn't that interesting? So if you've ever read Mark Twain, he talks about being in Hannibal. And the Wikipedia, the, the Wikipedia notable players thing doesn't have anything, like doesn't put, doesn't really put Mark Twain in the, uh, doesn't really put it in the in the proper context to me because there's like the river is there we go this is the second line okay it says the the uh, the site of Hannibal was originally inhabited by various cultures of indigenous native american tribes okay so that was the entire united states that's not really not really news the river community is best known for the mid 19th century boyhood home of author samuel longhorn clemens 
also known as Mark Twain, which that's his pen name. Wouldn't it be more, is he more well known as Mark Twain? Twain drew from his childhood settings for his novels, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Numerous historical sites are studied with Mark Twain in the places depicted in this in his fiction. Heritage tourism contributes to the Hannibal economy as the city attracts both American and international tourists. But, so you've got this, okay? You've got Mark Twain. I don't believe Mark Twain died in... I don't think he's buried in Hannibal. I believe he's married. Or he's, I believe he's buried in. Yes, here you go. He's buried in New York. So it's not like, you know, he wasn't that big on Hannibal. Anyway, we went there. We went there. We went to Hannibal. And I want you to see just this one thing that I that I put together. And please, this is this is the this is the thing that I did today for you. We went to Hannibal. Went to Hannibal. Um, it's a two-hour drive from St. Louis. And, yeah. Go home. Well, we didn't. We drove to Wentzville. And we'll give a shout-out. We had a wonderful hamburger at the Tattooed Dog. It's in Wentzville. Um, I don't know if they're, I mean, that's a great hamburger. And then, uh, we had fried Oreos for dessert, which are fantastic. And that's the first time I've ever had them. Highly recommend fried Oreo. So let's see. That was my day. Did I had a, a million things I could have done online yesterday. For the, for the real estate business, for the podcast, for the live stream. A million things I could have done yesterday, but I just wanted to get out. The drive to Hannibal is not the most scenic. It's also not, you know, I'm biased to the south of Missouri. Whenever, I mean, my, my wife and I's favorite place to go is south towards Farmington. Just like there's rolling hills and there's trees and there's, it's just nice. Whereas going north, it's, it's more of a, it's more like open plain. A couple of hills, I guess, but it's just, it's just a different, different landscape. So yeah, that was fun. That's what we did. And I got to show you something on video and you know, I'm not very good at, I'm not very good at doing stuff ahead of time for the for the live stream, so I was happy to do that. I thought now that we got that done, I'd, I'd like to get into the the real estate biz. Well, that's not exactly true. I'd like to see what is beating me right now. What is beating me right now in YouTube? So I'm not going to show you, you know, like the screen, but I am I am interesting. I'm interesting. So all so I see mine home staging tips on my front page. Um, there's one person watching, and it says me. Now for my live, so I've got 255 people watching uh, Stargate music, 
657 people. I don't, you know what? People that listen to music on YouTube, I'm not going to, I'm not going to profile anymore because honestly, I listen to music on YouTube and I don't watch it. I just listen to it while I'm working. So no, I'm not going to do it. A Machines Convoy 2020, 2022 live, 6.1 thousand watching that. 170 people are watching. When is it time to buy crypto? 6.3 people are watching something from France. Um, 72,000 people are watching something from Obrador, who I believe is in Mexico. And he's wearing a very heavy coat, so I'm guessing it's cold in Mexico, which I didn't know that happens. Um, we got something in Bosnian. 10,000 people are watching. 50 people are watching a jewelry store online. 1,000 people watching Bolsonaro do something. I don't know what. If he lost or wins or I don't, I just know people don't like Bolsonaro. I don't know. I don't know any more than that. Um, we got 20,000 people talking about Ethereum. We got 29,000 people watching Steven Crowder. We got 370 people watching um, Bitcoin stuff. 18 people watching this uh, Terminator, but it's in uh, Cyrillic, so no one knows, like me. Um, 598 people watching Stock Markets with Bruce. 27 people watching Boys vs. Girls. Who's going to win? Rich, popular versus poor, unpopular student in... And it gets cut off. I feel like I could get that someday. 13 people. Live participate in daily tournament to buy a rose. So, I mean, I'm getting beat by, by a number of different types of channels. Why do an increasing, ever-increasing amount of black men have no interest in marriage? That's 66 people watching that. Useful Idiots Monday Morning with Aaron Mate and Katie Halper. 1.2 thousand people watching that. Four people watching the MRP relaunch. That's kind of my. That's kind of where I'm at. I think I can catch that. I don't know. I just. I think. I feel like I could do better. No offense. I day one day's left for cust, twenty custom giveaway. Sixteen people watching. Prince Elite Cup. Prize pool 2022 INR knockout round. 18 people are watching. Like, I feel like I should be, I should be there. But no, I've got one. I've got one. I don't even know if I'm going to do, I don't even know if I'm going to do a podcast tonight. Because, seriously. Who's going to watch it? Who's going to watch it? Anyway, that's where I'm at there. Let's go over to, I'll do the screen share. Let's go over to Google Trends and talk about why I'm not talking about anything on Google Trends. Okay, the first story from yesterday, 2 million searches, Miss USA is dead. Well, that's not, that's not really something I want to talk about. Number two, Rafi Dahl and the Dahl wins the Australian Open, but Djokovic isn't there. So I don't know, would he have won if he was there? I don't know. Someone named Mason Greenwood. Manchester United drops Mason Greenwood after abuse charge. Now this is 50,000 searches in the United States. Someone's watching Manchester United soccer. Howard Hessman, Dr. Johnny Fever on on WKRP in Cincinnati dies. That's 500,000 plus searches. So we've got two deaths in the top five. I'm sorry. Two deaths in the top four. Super Bowl, the Los Angeles Rams, which they used to be the St. Louis Rams, and that the owner of the Rams is the most terrible human being in the world, I'm pretty sure, um, Satan incarnate, and I despise him and can't wait until we see him on the list of people that have passed in, uh, in uh, Google search. Can't come soon enough. And I mean that. I mean, you may say, you're a mean person for for wishing death on others. That guy, he's a pile. He's a pile. 
Howard Hessman, uh, Super Bowl, USMT. I don't know what that is. USMNT. Almost want to look just to find out. The Batman, don't care. Josh McDaniels, football, don't care. Peyton Manning, football, don't really care. Halo TV series, don't care. Nick Cannon, here's Nick Cannon's trending. It says, how many kids does Nick Cannon have and who are the mothers of his children? God, I mean, can you do a worse job of, um, of, I don't, if there's something wrong about, there's something wrong about this search. I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put it other than that. There's something wrong about this search. Um, I mean, the fact that you have to have a Google search about how many kids a man has seems wrong. Earthquake San Diego. I don't really wish that on anybody. Mexico, Costa Rica. Football or soccer. Don't care. USA versus Canada. Soccer. Don't care. Aaron Andrews in the news like the, what, second time in two weeks? Yeah. Tony Bennett. I don't know about that. Death on the Nile. Fox Sports, eh, Euphoria Season 2, Episode 4, don't care. And Troy Aikman. So just nothing, nothing that I want to talk about. But I guess the irony there is that I'm talking about something that I don't want to talk about for, you know, a minute or two. Let's get to some houses. I like houses. You like houses. There's three. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma today. We've got, uh, we've got three Clint Chinowith and Cohen have the top two, and then Walter and Associates has the third one. It's a modern house. We don't really see really expensive modern houses, and I I bet that if you went to, um, if you said John, what type, what style of homes would you see? Are you most likely to see in Tulsa, Oklahoma? I would not say contemporary. Let's look at the first one. Five and a half million. Let's see. Make sure my screen's right. I don't want people to be not getting it. So here we go. 36 pictures, 6 million, house built in uh, 2010, five car garage, four beds, four and a half baths, 9,000 square feet on a two acre lot. Let's just look at the property history. Listing removed since 2020. It looks like it sold in 2014, listed in 2018, and has not sold since then. Came to the market at 6.5 million in 2018. Now 2022, four years. Let's see what the details say. Jaw drop in, in all caps. Jaw dropping contemporary on the 12th home of Southern Hills Golf Course, geothermal heat and air, living room with 22 foot ceilings, multiple kitchens with Viking appliances, elevator, movie theater, expansive master closet. Wow. Saltwater pool and outdoor races. I think, I think they're not doing enough on the listing description. This is just me. Okay, so you walk in. What do we got? That's nice. That's nice. No argument, right? I don't know if this is if this is a what do you say frosted out or whatever pixelated. I wonder what that is, or if it's supposed to be pixelated. I'm kind of I'm kind of curious now. It looks phallic. There, I said it. Okay, so there's the entrance, right? I mean, nice kitchen. Now, I don't want to live on a golf course. I had some friends that lived on a golf course. They always had golf balls in their backyard. I thought it was stupid, but whatever. That's an interesting shower. There's your expansive closet. Oh, there's the elevator. Thank you. That's the elevator right there. I like elevators and houses. I think it's cool. But you know what's funny to me, and this is this is going downstairs, I can tell. But when you have an elevator, do you ever use the stairs, these grand staircases that you have at that point? There's a nice game room and there's gonna be a theater room. There it is. <laughs> Kinda cool how they have that set up. If that's in the basement, it might not even be in the basement. I 
I suspect I, I suspect that's a death, a death, a, a a desk, an office. That's nice. After nice outdoor space, overlooking the pool and the hot tub. I like the pool and hot tub combo. I don't know, but maybe that makes me weird, but I think it's it's great. Okay, that's the first house. What do we got for the second house? We've got, uh, is it in the same zip code? Yes. This is a five bedroom, seven bath, only 7,000 square feet on an 8,000 square foot. On an eight, eight acre lot. A unique opportunity to own a Tulsa treasure right on Southern Hills Golf Course. Nearly eight acres with a private estate. This property features a 7,000 square foot, five bedroom, seven and a half bath, single story residence, a mid century ma masterpiece. Also featured is a 14,000 square foot, two bedroom, two bath guest house, an 1,800 square foot full, two bedroom, two and a half bath pool house, two shops. I don't know what that means. Greenhouse, lake, tennis court, outdoor kitchen, and pool. This property is being sold with an adjacent vacant lot on Evanston Circle. Please see the survey for details 1959 three car garage 153 days on the market property history listed in 2020 5.6 million or down to 4.8 million 50 pictures perfect number i would say contemporary i would say contemporary design well mid-century but i mean what i'm saying it's not the classic the craftsman style architecture that we're accustomed to i mean a very interesting pool area empty and the, i mean so it's dated i mean let's be honest it's dated and i don't think it's intentional like what, what am i trying to say people just got old so is there a way in this home at 4.8 million dollars to um take advantage of the contemporary design and yet bring it into this century and i'm look I mean, yes, there's a place for like classic architecture, right? Like a historical architecture. But I don't think that a home is necessarily for that. I mean, if you buy a home, it's yours. You need to make it your home. To me, I mean, you know, will some of this stuff come back in style? Well, maybe. But I mean, you've got to live in this thing, right? You've got to live in this house. And so, oh, look at that. I don't know what that is. Oh, look, a sport court. I mean, that's nice, right? It's just sometimes I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And, it, you know, I get that the golf course is there. I don't know. It needs work. So two of the three homes are going to be contemporary homes, contemporary styles. This is 3.9 million, five bedroom, four bath, 7,000 square feet. Different zip code than the other one. Built in 2011, 41 days on the market. Midtown, contemporary retreat, 22 foot ceilings, expansive windows, natural light, and unobstructed views of nature. Radiant heated marble floors, geothermal floating staircase. Primary suite with oversized master closet, sauna adjacent to master shower, architectural pool spa, an outdoor kitchen, 7,000 square feet on 1.9 acres. Wow. They are brief with their descriptions in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Listed in 2021, just in December, so not long. I mean, very modern. And you wonder, you know, that other house was, was built in, you know, what, 1950s, did we see? And it's going to have some of the same design skews as this home, which is amazing. I mean, I have a lot of respect for people that live in homes like this and, and desire homes like this. Um, it's just not for me. I don't feel comfortable here. Um, I don't know. Does that make me a bad person? I don't know. I like the furniture. I don't know. 
But you know, it's 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 one of those things. It's like John, you don't have three million dollars for a house, or four billion. This doesn't concern you. I was like, okay. But I mean, there's the shower, and there's the outside. Seems a little risque. I don't think that's a pool. I think that's like a reflection area because I don't know. The rock looks painful for your feet, but I don't know for a fact. I mean, there's your wonderful outdoor space. There's a trampoline on the second story of a house, which seems like a bad idea, but again, who am I? It's got to be a pool, but it sure does look hard on the body, hard on the feet. I don't know, nice. It's like a compound. Kind of interesting the way it's built. No complaints. No complaints. So there's the top three. I mean, there's an 11,000 square foot house. I'm more interested. But look at all these modern homes. Isn't it, I mean, kudos to them. Let's, you know what? Look, 3.6 million on 2.31 acres. 74137 area code. So not, this house is calling my name. 50 pictures, 100 days on the market, five-car garage built in 2001. I mean, not a big one. Look, inviting home on a professionally lake, landscaped 2.3 acres. Blood to a Wookiee, 100-year-old roof, or 100-year roof, high-efficiency AC and heat units, 21 and 24. Sear, 98% efficiency, six humidifiers, three HWT. I don't know what that means. Hot water heaters, hot water tanks, 98% efficient. Fresh water treatment system for whole home and pool. Two Bosch dishwashers, Viking double ovens, range, and cooktop, standalone ice maker, full upright, zero fridge, and freezer, color, 90 generator, 90 kVA generator, two washer hookups, and two dryer hookups, wired speakers throughout the house, saltwater pool, eight inch copper gutter. Now, they just do listings in Tulsa differently than we do. I mean, for the wording, listed in 2020, 3.9 million down to 3.6, it's a relative bargain. There's the front. I'm I'm getting sick of these pictures like this. I'm just saying it's overdone. I think a grand of a grand view. I don't particularly like this tree here. It's overgrown, in my opinion. That is a cool house. That's solar, I guess. I don't know. Or paneling so that you can, you know, so that you can get light down there. I think that's what that is. I mean, look at that. That is a nice entrance. I like it. 3.6 million. I mean, this, see, this house speaks to me. I don't know if they have an elevator. The kitchen's kind of weird. They got washing machines and dryers and wine cellar. And I mean, you know, other than like a living room, bathrooms, kitchens, and bedrooms, what more can you do with a house? A game room? I mean, that's a beautiful entrance, in my opinion. We saw, already saw this picture, but thanks. I hate when you double pictures on me. Great closet, you know, interesting bathroom, sauna. It's got that thing there. See that right there? We saw that in another house. I mean, I would change some things in this house. Don't get me wrong. I love the outdoor space. That's what I thought. See, I thought that was solar panels, but no, it's like translucent so that you can have a lot of light down there. Um, having Being bald, I don't really particularly want. 
a lot of light. I'm just saying. Let's look at an article. I don't know how many we'll get through today. Four staging tips that have universal appeal. So I submit to you that the point of this article should be to see whether or not I agree with these four staging tips. Do they really have universal appeal? Remove personal items. Well, I mean, yeah. Okay. But that's not... I don't know. Some people say, like, get rid of religious symbols. I don't. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, the first thing you want to focus on when staging a home is to make sure to remove any personal effects. Pictures, kids, drawings, certificates, or anything else that might identify you needs to be taken down. While there are safety benefits to taking this step, the main reason you want to depersonalize your home is that so many potential buyers can visualize themselves living in your home. If you capture their imagination, you've already won half the battle. I agree with that. I agree with that. Um, but just don't go overboard, especially in a hot market. I mean, just declutter is the word. It says, oh, no, I'm locked up. It says go for neutral. Although you may have a very bold decorating personality, it may not, it might be best to mute that somewhat when you're trying to sell your home. Buyers want to be able to visit them, visualize themselves living in your home. But if your decor is too far from what they enjoy, you might cause them to miss the underlying beauty of your home. This isn't to say, of course, that you can't have a few fun pops of color throughout your home. Instead, just make sure that everything matches and isn't too distracting. Well, I mean, we're seeing that beige has come back. Let's not do khaki ever. Um, maybe. Maybe. I mean, don't do purple. No one, no one wants to see purple. Uh, yellow in the kitchen has always been, you know, dicey. I'll agree with that. I mean, how do you, how do you, the word neutral kind of indicates that it's not something that's going to be offensive. So it says, keep it simple. When realtors show a home, it makes a world of difference if they can easily explain what a room can be used for. That's why it's important to simplify your decor as much as possible. Try to only have a few main pieces of furniture in each room and make sure to remove any clutter that makes your home look smaller. This will help potential buyers catch the vision of how they can use certain rooms as they tour your home. I agree with this. Some of these larger homes that we're seeing have so many pieces of furniture in them. I mean, I don't even want to navigate the furniture to find the light switch. I mean, there's that many pieces of furniture. Um, I've always thought if you can keep it simple as far as a few pieces that people's brains just don't go, go into overdrive. I mean, if you've got this room where there's all this stuff, your brain starts picking out like all this stuff. And then you do, then you start picking out what's on the walls. And by the time you get done, like you're tired. Because again, you are trying to put yourself in this home. So I agree with that. I think that's universal. And then appropriate exterior. Staging a home starts with the exterior. An attractive exterior will create a strong first impression, making it easier for buyers to overlook the small flows in your home. Try to coordinate your landscaping with the season, mums in the fall, flowering plants in the spring and summer, as well as simple, tidy t landscaping in the winter. Um, hard to do that in the winter in St. Louis. I mean, if you could get the leaves picked up, that would be good. But as far as trimming bushes and stuff like that, going to be difficult in this time of the year. I agree with mums. I agree with, you know, I, the curb appeal, I would have called it. And I would have, I would have done... On the curb appeal, I would have definitely, um, how do I say it? I would have made an effort. Yes. I would have made an effort. That's enough in the winter time. I mean, you want to have good front, good first pictures, good, good impression. And then what you really want is, let's say you take the listing pictures a month before the listing goes active. You want to make sure that when you do, finally go active and start sh and have people start showing the house that it's accurate. So the picture they saw is similar to what they see now. You don't have a bunch of dead plants. You don't want to have leaves all over the place, things like that. When you start off with something, you know, nice, hard to do. Sometimes it snows, you know, things like it's, it's, it's tough. Do I think people, I think, I think, do I think when you list a house in the winter, does do you get um less enthusiasm for the home because it's hard to have anything outside 
And I would answer that by saying, no, I think, I think buyers give you a pass on the winter. I think they say, you know what? It's winter. They, it's hard to get stuff in order. Um, so I don't think that's a problem. Realtor.com article. With housing prices spiking everywhere, everywhere, where is it cheaper to rent versus buy? I've never, ever felt comfortable with these articles because um, th- I think the bias exists for me that I am a, I'm a real estate agent and I want people to buy homes. I think that if you bought a home and stayed in it for a long time and made repairs, you know, maintain the home, I think that you would benefit financially over the long haul, more so than you would renting. People make the argument that you can rent and then it's cheaper than than buying, which is a hard one to believe anyway. And then they say, well, you can uh, then use that money to invest in other things that make you more money. And I would say, well, well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's my thought. So um, it says... In today's wild and scary housing market where prices seem to have no ceiling... Mortgage rates are once again climbing, and the number of homes going up for sale is paltry. The answer is a bit more complicated than usual. Check that a lot more complicated. Okay, cheaper to rent versus buy. It says those renewing their leases are often slack jawed as they're confronted with steep double digit rental hikes. A huge change from just a year ago, where landlords were eagerly giving away concessions such as free months of rent to fill up their buildings. Rent surged more than 19% in the 50 largest markets over the past year. That's even more than the increase for in sale. Home prices. That's all. That's even for the. Inc- that's even more than the increase in for sale home prices. So, does it make more sense to buy a home and lock in fixed housing costs before prices and mortgage rates rise even further, or should folks continue renting while they're waiting for the seller's market to come back down? Conventional wisdom has suggested that it almost always makes more financial sense, at least in the long term, to buy rather than rent. Is that still true today? I think it is. I think it will always be that way. And so it says, as so often the case these days, it depends on where you live. And that's where I just, I just don't, I just don't think it makes any sense. So the realtor.com data team took a deep dive to find the places where it could make more financial sense to become a homeowner and where it could be cheaper to remain or become tenants. And then it says, spoiler, it still makes sense to buy in about three quarters of the hundred largest metropolitan areas. According to our analysis, the median list price for a home sale across the country was $375,000 in December with the median mortgage payment averaging about $1,400 a month. <clears throat> and then it's, it's tricky because it assumes that buyers put down 10% and does not include property taxes or home insurance. So if you put 20% down, your payment's different. If you put less down, it's different. It says, well, that's not anything to sneeze at. It's considerably less than the $1,600 monthly median rent payment. And of course, home ownership has the big added bonus, uh, big ass, if I said that, I apologize, big added bonus of building equity. It's better to rent than buy in Fort Myers. Median rent is $4,005 a month. Yeah, so here's the deal. You got $1,000 in a house payment on a median home price of $440,000. And your median rent is $4,000. Guy says, even if you wanted to rent something, the probability of getting a rental is pretty low. Buyers looking for a slice of Florida livestock can be a, get a, they, they show a listing of their home for three seventy five. San Antonio, Texas, medium home price three forty seven. dollars Median rent is $3,178. Median monthly house payments, $1,414. I mean, it's just kind of it's obvious, I hate to say. I mean,
St. Louis makes the list. Detroit makes the list. Though this is cheap, cheaper to buy. Okay. Sorry. And then this is cheaper to rent. Sorry. San Jose. Monthly payment, 5000 Month median rent, 1300 I agree with that. Seattle. I mean, I agree with this. 100%. But, you know, what I would, and I'm going to wrap this up today. Here's what I would say. Now, let me try and, it's hard for me to put my thoughts into words, but here we go. If you were a family, okay, and you were working, and you could work anywhere in the country, why would you work somewhere where you can't afford to buy? It doesn't make any sense. And I mean that across the board. I mean, I love Denver. I think it's great. But if I can't afford to buy there, and can only rent the rest of my life, it's not good for me. It's not, it's not, it ruins my ability to build equity in the home over time. Now, some people will rent for the rest of their lives and they think that's great, and I, and I don't have a problem with that. But I, I just can't imagine in this day and age of this, uh, this workforce that's able, I mean, let's say maybe 50% of the workforce is able to work from home due to technological gains, then I think that I think that those people should move places where they can afford a home. I don't think they should rent. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me. Tell me that I'm wrong. Well, with that, I'm going to head out. I don't even have, I don't know. I'm not going to get into it, but I just want to say thanks. Thank you for watching. I know you guys typically watch later and i appreciate it and uh you know maybe i'll do a live stream at night one night just to just to, just to see if we get some more uh some more people but it won't be tomorrow tomorrow i'll be here at nine central time 